SAP is proud to announce a new innovation in the area of data integration that we call Intelligent Lookup. It empowers business users to harmonize data where standard techniques fail. So what are they? Very often, when data practitioners try to integrate data from different sources, these datasets do not share a kind of identifier required for classical database joins. For example, picture sales data from a retailer that is brought together with product data from a supplier. Very often, product IDs might not be the same on both sides, or at least not for 100% of the data. So in order to harmonize them, users would need to revert back to other attributes like product texts, etc. But then it will be very difficult to define rules that work for 100% of all cases, and that don't leave ambiguities where decisions need to be taken. The same is true for regional comparisons of, say, sales growth and GDP growth in the same regions. Technicalities like special characters or translation issues and region names will make integration very hard in practice. And such cases literally abound in real life. This is where Intelligent Lookup comes in and offers an entirely novel approach to this integration challenge. It gives subject matter experts a business-oriented, interactive, and iterative environment for solving these cases in very little time. So how do we do that? As said, it's an interactive environment that creates user mappings. So through a series of rules and an entirely no-code UI, data practitioners can take the data as it is and create the required mappings. These mappings are created through rules. So rules that are configured by the user can create these mappings automatically. Whenever something needs to be edited, practitioners can do so and really down to the record level. Once these mappings have been found, they're persisted in what we call a pairing table. So once a match has been made, it doesn't need to be made ever again because that's a solved case. So when new data arrives that would require the same common identifier, it now exists. So we're lucky. Because what all we, all we do is fully integrated into Data Warehouse Cloud, Intelligent Lookup is really a first-class citizen. So whenever you do any type of data modeling that would have required such an Intelligent Lookup, your, the, your case is solved. And all the other modeling entities in Data Warehouse Cloud, like data flows, views, uh, be them SQL or graphical, uh, business entities and so on, they can entirely rely on Intelligent Lookup's existence. So let's take a concrete case. In here, our user has a couple of sales records that were being handed over by the sales department that we, that we now want to analyze. So let's look what these are. So here we have transactions that happened on a given date in a location that is identified by its city, its region, its country, and that has an order value. Now, what additional analyses could I want to do? So possibly I want to plot this on a map. So I need to geo-enrich, or I want to orientate myself towards, okay, how is my continental breakdown, my regional breakdown, and so on. So what I really want to do is geo-enrich this data. Now, how would I do that? So evidently, I would turn to data marketplace or to data sources and get myself a list of um, cities and places that I can then map back to geolocations of a continent and so on. So let's do that. Now I've got myself a table of cities coming from data marketplace or being um, yeah, uh, connected via standard DWC means. So let's look what we have now. So this seems to be exactly what I was looking for. So for roughly 110,000 cities in the world, I have the name, the country, and I'm mapping back to the respective continent, a region that in this data set is called subdivision, and the respective latitude longitude. So this seems to be exactly what I want to do. So how would I proceed with standard techniques like database joints? So evidently, I would join them. So what I would do is join them over the city, the region, the country. So case solved, isn't it? 
not so fast. So let's see what the data looks like after we've joined it. So evidently, this join on city, region, country was not very successful because for most of my orders and for most of my order value, there's really no lookup on the continent name at all because evidently this join didn't quite cut it. So this is the problem we are trying to solve. The data is meant to come together semantically, but it doesn't quite do because there's no common identifiers. And just joining over city, region, and country apparently doesn't solve the problem. So how does Intelligent Lookup solve this? Intelligent Lookup is a standard operator in your arsenal now in Data Builder. So, and you create one by just clicking here. What you then do is drag in those required tables, very much as you would do in a join. So on the one hand side, we have those sales records. And for these sales records, for each and every location, I want to look up its respective city information. So let's pull in that city information. And I'm interested to look up the continent name, the latitude, and the longitude. So for each of my 16,000 sales records, I try to pick up those additional return values. So how would I do that? I would do this by a series of rules that I can chain together and that respect either fuzzy comparisons or exact comparisons. So the evident first way to do this is to do exactly like I did in the, uh, in the first join. So compare city to city, region to subdivision, and country to country. This is sort of the most straightforward case. It doesn't quite solve it as we last saw, but we can sort of heal those cases that are left unsolved after the fact. So let's um, deploy this and run this. So let's now run this. Now, during deployment, the respective mapping table was created, the join using that mapping table has been created, and now we've run it and filled those mapping table. So we find exactly what our original join gave us, namely that for 90% of the cases, this rule could find the respective mapping entries. So for example, for the case of Bitter Wolfen, there was exactly one Bitter Wolfen with the same name, region, country, and that data set, and so the map could be, could, the match could be made. But there are so many entries where this didn't quite solve it. So how do we continue? We continue with something that your standard join cannot do, or not easily. And that is taking, chaining this and piping this into yet another operator. So we take all those unmatched records and we configure another rule. And let's say we now compare only city to city and country to country. And this is sort of a weaker rule that gives less uncertainty, but hopefully solve this case now. So let's deploy. As before, we now run this updated uh, rule set. Now this brings us closer to the solution because now this weaker rule solved the case for 46 additional percent of the cases. So that's great. Apparently, very often, the region field was not sufficiently filled. But still, there's only one constant in Germany, apparently. There's only one cultural in Germany. And same for all those other places. So what about those others? So the thing is that this weaker rule could not quite solve all the cases. Why is that? because apparently there's two Berlins in Germany. So how would we know which one to take? So let's see what the region field is on the left-hand side. Let's make a bit of space. Let's pull in the region field from the right-hand side. And now we realize what was wrong. And this first join 
could quite solve it because region Berlin was compared to subdivision Land Berlin. So obviously this is the same, but it's not the exact same strength. So obviously the join couldn't find that. But what we can say is that those 1600 transactions, they are really mapping to exactly this one. So let's do that. I'm a data practitioner. I made my um, due diligence. And so I can now take that call and say, I'll match this. And this will pipe those 1600 entries over and adjust my percentages here. And so I could work myself through those, through those multiple matches. And it's really not that many because they are really grouped in these packages of, um, of transactions that get grouped together by that same location ID. So it's not that I need to take 1200 decisions because already 900 I can do by, uh, by picking the right Mühlhausen, I can do another 100 by picking the right Waldorf. And here again, we see that for Waldorf, what was wrong is that this place here uh, is, let's make a bit of space again, is Baden-Württemberg region. It's not Baden-Württemberg, a translation issue. How stupid is that? So let's make that match. While on the other hand side, we have still those 70% of unsolved cases. Now, so what do we do about them? Yeah, let's chain another role. We can change them arbitrarily long and let's configure that. So possibly a fuzzy match can also help us. And what if we overcome those translation topics by um, looking at the city names in a fuzzy way and see how far that carries us? So let's deploy again. As before, I continue by running my rule. Now this rule has triaged my 17% into a lot of solved cases, the review one, where the spelling is it's just slightly different. Again, I said um, translation issues, Umlaut for Zurich and Zürich, Furtwangen and Furtwangen im Schwarzwald, Kloster Sernois, Kloster Sernois with, without hyphen and with hyphen, Ludenscheid and Ludenscheid. So very obvious and uh, things that I just can take and say, I made my due diligence, I confirm that. And again, those 173 transactions, I get them over to my match bucket. Same for Zurich. I have 1,000 transactions there. I confirm them. Possibly the fuzzy did something wrong that I might want to reject, so I need to work through my list here. And there are a lot of multiple matches as well, where my rule found a lot of different Frankfurts. So there's one Frankfurt, which one it is. Let's find out. So let's pull in the region subdivision. Let's make a, bit, make a bit more space. And apparently it's Frankfurt in Hessen in Germany. Ooh, there are quite a few Frankfurts. And now, oh, there's really only this one will be it. Let's see. So the subdivision is Hesse. It's not Hessen, so close. But how could I avoid working myself through this entire list? So possibly what I want to do is not compare Frankfurt to all the Frankfurts worldwide, but only to Frankfurts in Germany. So why not take those 10% of cases and sort of ensure that for those multiple matches, certain subconditions are met? Like I really want the country to be the same as the country. So let's enforce that through a subsequent exact match. And if we now run this rule, our life becomes a lot simpler because out of those 10% that can now get triaged by this fourth rule, a lot of the cases get sort of get automatically ma mapped because apparently there were cities that, let's pull in which cities they were. So we have the city name and the city, country, and the city. 
that matched closely. So Timiwara and Timizuara, they were a multiple match on the fuzzy end, but the other matches weren't all in Romania. So now, but there's really only one in Romania. So that's a close case. So those decisions out of those 10, those 2% were taken automatically for us. And for those other 7%, our decision becomes just so much simpler. Because again, if I pull in the city, and I pull in the city, I realize what happened. And that is that there's only one Frankfurt that I now want to consider, and this is the right one. And so those 900 matches, I just match them through one click of a button. Those 1,200 open transactions, 900 of those get sort of automatically matched. And for Bad Wunnenberg, that was fuzzily matched to Berg. That's possibly nothing what I want to do. But for others, I um, can do my case and say, mm, which one, which Rappersville is it? Possibly I want to pull in the subdivision again and the region here. And obviously, it's the one in St. Gallen, not ST.Gallen, so it's this one. Let's match that. So what I now did is that most of my cases now got matched because I have those 19% that got matched by the first rule, those 57 that I can beef up by working myself through those 7% open type picks, those, that third rule that took the 17% and already got 7% automatically right. And I, those out of those 10%, eight, I already closed. So my output view really has it mostly solved. So there's not so many open cases left. So there are a couple of nulls, null transaction that I still need to work through or not, depending on their value. Let's see, currently it's null, but possibly I could do even better and say, you know what? this continent, I directly want to report on that and say, ah, you know what, this is unknown. I don't want this to be null. Let's put this to unknown and deploy last one, one last time. And now that I refreshed my output view, I have exactly what I wanted. Some continents are unknown, latitude longitudes are currently set to null. And now this is something that I want to use further. So I jump back and uh, let me report on this. So I create a new graphical view and use what I just did. So I can entirely work, for, work within all the other tools like data flows, SQL views, and so on. And this now is exactly the data as I wanted it. So how great is that? So how has my analytics changed? So let's put this to a test. And if I now jump over, the numbers have entirely changed. So from a hopeless case where most of my continent information was really null, I now made it very clear that the order value coming from Europe is largely outpacing anything else. And the same is true for more order counters. So out of, all of a sudden, out of those uh, oh, uh, slightly over 16,000 16, orders, we solved in no less than 20 minutes almost 16,000. So that's great. And this is really the power of intelligent lookup. And uh, that's what I wanted to share and what I'm really proud about. Thanks for watching. Bye.